Hi guys, uh, we're back with mm, with more Game Maker tutorials. Today we're gonna be developing the wall movement. In our last tutorial, we implemented the movement of the character and we limited it to the um, ground and um, well to the level boundaries. Today we're gonna be um, developing it further, and we're gonna be um, just, we're gonna be adding the um, the ball movement. So let's start creating the ball object. Yep. We're gonna give it a sprite. And we're gonna um, see. Okay, so this ball is. Uh, oops, this ball doesn't. For some reason, it's not in the center. The origin of the object must be. Sorry, the origin of the sprite must be in the center. And damn it, Made a mistake. We had an object here. It is a. Um, this is our medium sized ball, so we uh, may want it to be bigger, so uh, there, there, there are options, we can scale the object, which is going to be the simplest one, based on the size, or we um, we can um, to create different sprites for the different sizes. So we're gonna call these uh, instead of ball, we're gonna call these um, medium. Okay, because that's the size that it's gonna have, and we will later develop what to do with big ball, which is gonna be split into medium balls, and medium ball is gonna be split into small balls, etc. It's gonna be a, there's gonna be a big uh, sorry a very big ball a big ball a medium ball and a small ball and each one is gonna be roughly twice the size or something like that of the previous one anyway we're not gonna be um, bothering actually we're gonna start with the very big okay because I think it's it's gonna be easier so. The very big, we're gonna be uh, creating a yeah, and so we're gonna be adding an event in the create. We're gonna make it bigger. So the very big ball is uh, somehow big. It's gonna be like um, three times the size of a normal ball. Well, instead of doing that, what we can do is um, set, not a bit, set the size, the scale, the sprite. Sprite. Scale now. Uh, about image x scale equals ball scale and that. So we don't have a ball scale setup. But we can add variable definitions and add a ball scale. And we can set it to 3, for instance. Um, just this way, uh, what we get is that, yeah, in the room, this is going to be like this. But when you run it, But it was expected, so oh, I saw how I wrote this too. Yeah, 
it is bigger. Uh, I don't like it because in the room it appears small and that is quite annoying. So this bit annoying. I'm gonna gonna create a um, I'm gonna duplicate this sprite and it's gonna be small very big okay what we're gonna do is we're gonna edit the image image <coughs> resize all frames we're gonna be a scaling the image uh, we're gonna make it 96 times 96 and we're gonna apply and it's you know it's the same and this is close keep it in the center and that's right um, it's kind of annoying that it's not really adapting, but anyway, we will make do with that for now. So in here, what we're going to be doing is you know, we're going to be using that. The border scale, the border scale is going to be one, and we will use the border scale for different um, different balls later. On. We're gonna add. Uh, because we're gonna be we're gonna be using we're gonna be doing the movement of the ball uh, ourselves here. We're not gonna be using H speed and V speed because I rather do it ourselves. And we're gonna be using X speed, which is gonna be zero, and Y speed, it's gonna be zero. Okay. I'm actually going to call them Bell X and Bell Y. I'm not used to calling velocity to what? Bell Y. Yeah. Bell X and Bell Y. That's right. So that way we have the velocity in the X axis and the velocity in the Y axis for the ball. They're both initialized to zero. And no. Actually, the velocity in the x-axis needs to be um, initialized to whatever velocity we want it to have. So let's say um, we want it to be like um, 10, for instance. That's, I think that's OK. It goes fast. Oh, by the way, I forgot to say, in here, the collision mask shouldn't be a square. It should be a ellipse. And same for the very big ball. So let's make it move first. So, so we um, so we're gonna create a custom step event and then. The first thing we do is we uh, do the horizontal movement. Oh, we're gonna be needing a gravity too, which we're gonna set to the same as we set the, uh, the one for the player 0.5. The horizontal movement is very easy. It's um, we can um, make the horizontal movement. Uh, constant, so it's it's got a constant speed. So basically, um, uh, we're gonna create our new x. It's gonna be x plus x bell, bell x. Uh, no, I don't know if I like it better with bell x or x bell. X bell sounds better. I like it better. X bell. Excellent. So with new X, we have uh, the, the potential new position for the um, for the for the ball. One of the things that we may do in the create is to define a variable that is going to be um, the radius, which is basically going to be a uh, 0.5 times the sprite 
with I'm going to make it absolute just in case for whatever reason someone decides to set a um, negative fold scale we can put around this in the crate so that we do it only once So, with these, first we check uh, um, position, check against the world, the room boundaries. Which is going to be um, 16 plus the radius. Then when it's uh, below that, we want the, the speed positive. And bounce the ball. So thing is, if we go in, um, if we're going past a wall, um, we may want. So usually, what we would do with a character is that we would put it at the uh, at the very top, um, the not top, but the limit position that we can use. So, for a normal character, what we do is something like new x is um, sixteen plus radius. Actually, this is kind of so, okay. But in this case, what we want is uh, the ball to bounce. So we've got a constant velocity, right? And when we hit the wall, what we do is we uh, move the uh, the opposite direction. So what does this mean? This means that we are gonna be um. So if if it was moving, let's say at ten units per second and we have two units till the wall then we're gonna be wasting like eight units of movement while in reality what we do is it would move two units to the wall and then eight units back in the other direction right so why not do it let's do it so what we do is um so probably we one is about left I'm gonna be this Right. So this bounce this x is gonna be new x. Uh, sorry, left minus new x. This is how much we've gone into the 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 wall, and then what we do is that the new x. X is the you know, X is left plus bounds text X. <coughs> Looks reasonable, doesn't it? So we move past the wall a certain distance. What we do is move back the distance inside the room. We have to do the same thing uh, on the other side. So same thing with this, right, it's gonna be room width minus 16 minus this so you can think, you can use minus 16 minus radius but I think it's clear this way, right? That's how you you would write it if you were doing a math class, right? So else if the new x is bigger equals right, then we want to make sure that the speed is negative because we have bound, we're bouncing off the right wall. And bounce the ball off the wall. 
So now bounce this x is going to be the other way around. It's going to be new x minus right. And new x is going to be right minus bounce this x. And finally, so finally, what we have is update the x position of the ball. X equals new x. This seems reasonable. Let's see if it works. What we should see is the ball moving left and right, left and right at a constant speed, which is good. Yeah, that's exactly what we wanted. It's going a bit fast, but yeah, uh, maybe let's put it to eight. But still, um, even if it is what we wanted, it's not, um, it's, it's not finished. We still need to make sure it bounces. It has to go down, bounce up, etc. Um, well, I mean, if you're not uh, familiar with Pang, in Pang what we had is that balls have a um, certain height that they try to reach. So a big ball is trying to reach a certain height, while a small ball is trying to reach a smaller height. And when they are bouncing off something that is not high enough, they just have a minimum uh, bounce speed back, right? So they just bounce, they, they don't, they barely ro roll around. But with the, um, but in general, it's not that they are bouncing always at the same speed of any surface. Instead, so what they do is they, um, they bounce, they bounce at certain speed to reach certain height. In game maker, um, the height you, you must consider that the zero zero is in the top left corner. So, if we set a certain height, um, we need to um, we need to consider that the velocity is going to be negative. All right. Uh, here is where I am missing a uh, a whiteboard. Because right now is what I'm gonna be trying to show you the math behind this. And to be honest, I'm not sure how to do this best uh, when recording a video. I don't have um, something that where I can write and I am not, I'm sorry, I don't have, you know, like a pen and, and a, an iPad or something where I can write, which is, you know, annoying because that would help a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be, um, um, Writing the, um, the the equations in the code, like in comments, and maybe I'll try later to help you with this kind of problem and try to find somewhere I could write with a pen and paper, and you and then I can record it, pen and paper or pen and iPad or whatever, and record it so that you can understand better what I mean and what equations we're using here. So we start the vertical movement. So the first thing we do is we are gonna update the uh, speed. So um, y bell is equals graph. Oh, I forgot. We have to find the uh, target height. So, um, so remember, the higher the height, sorry, the, the higher the, the, the number here, the lower the height. So, uh, so because it starts in the lower, uh, in the top left corner, we said 100, then it's going to be here, but if it's 200, it's going to be here, and 300 is going to be here. So, the, the higher this number, the lower the height. So. For instance, here we can um, set it to, I don't know, 
um, set it to one twelve. Let's say one hundred. Okay. So update the speed. Ah, wait. Sorry. Going back to the code. First thing we do is update the speed, and then with a the new speed, we calculate a new position. New y is going to be y plus y bar. Um, so we have to check against room boundaries. By the way, later we may want to add some, so I'm going to be leaving the command here. I kind of like doing this, like if I know I'm going to have to do some other code later, but I don't really need it now, like later we may add bricks and we may have to add collisions with those bricks. Then I write a little bit of a command and say, hey, check the collisions against the bricks and other objects here. And leave uh, three dots, meaning hey, it's not it's not finished, we'll do it later, but you know, it's the code should go here. It's also a reminder that you still have to do something there. Hey, don't forget, you, you, you got you got code to do there. So anyway, we were um, checking again the boundaries in the y uh, axis. So the first thing is if a new y is lower than um, well, let's go to the first the top and the top is going to be um, sixteen plus radius. Bottom is going to be from height minus 16 plus radius. If new y is lower than top, well, when we are um, bouncing off the top, we're going to bounce back at the same speed that we came. This um, this actually shouldn't happen, but anyway, we are just gonna create this op this option anyway. So um, it's positive. So the, the y value is gonna be and we also. Um, want to bounce the So, um, We go there and then we say this is not particularly correct, but anyway, because um, the velocity not particularly happy with this, but anyway, this is not going to happen very often, and when it happens, it's kind of it's not going to be completely correct because if we wanted to go at the same speed as it was coming we should consider how much it's gone and then you know make some calcs uh, or i don't know but on the other hand it's it's gonna feel all right it's the, the, the difference is gonna be negligible so so i think it's okay even if it's not completely correct and well we're not going for a completely physically accurate simulation well gosh i mean we're working in 2d there's not physically accurate simulation to the you know the world is not 2d but it's um it's gonna be good enough and then else if you want speaking on bottom then yeah 
we're gonna have this is gonna be a um, more complex so first thing we can do uh, later we're gonna have to check collisions against bricks objects and update the one position of the ball uh, yeah, I like sometimes to I mean if I know there is a bit of code that is complex I'm gonna first finish the easy part which is you know I mean this is exactly the same as this one and then go on with the hard part right so uh, so we have several options um, but the thing is we in any case one of the things that we want to do is to um, calculate the speed based on the position of the ball so um, first let's calculate the new position of the ball Um, bottom okay so we already have a new position with a new position the um, uh, speed to reach the target height. So we want to reach target height, right? And that means that we we have like um so we're currently at a so let's say that it is our y is uh well, new y is the new is the is the current position. Let's call it y, okay? No, new y. So new y is y0 is new y is target height uh, we know that y is y0 plus um, b0 times t plus plus uh, 0.5 times acceleration this is the gravity times t squared right so if y is going to be y1 this we, we have to make it y1 is equal to y0 plus b0 plus t times t plus 0.5 times the gravity times the t squared right so uh, we, we we have two um, two variables here b0 and t the rest are constants the gravity y1 and y0 they are constants but then we know something else we wanted to reach the target high but we wanted to reach it and stay there that's that's the most so we also want to do something like this so uh, we, we know that v is v0 plus a times t and we want v1 to be 0 which is going to be uh, v0 times gravity this is gravity times t so we know that v0 is going to have to be minus gravity times the time good now we can substitute this this part here in here and we have that y1 is going to be y0 plus minus g times t times the t plus 0.5 times t times t squared if we develop this further what we get is that y1 is y0 
minus g times t squared plus 1.5 times c times t squared. Oh, that looks nice, right? That means that y1 is y0 minus 0.5 times g times t squared. Okay, let's make it clear. So we pass this part to the other side and this part to the other side. So my so 0.5 times c times t squared is equal to y0 minus y1. Good, good. That means that uh, t squared is y0 minus y1 divided by 0.5 times g, which means that t is the square root of y0 minus y1 divided by 0.5 times g. And obviously, uh, b sub 0 is going to be um, minus g times this here. I don't know if it makes sense to you. Uh, I'd like to have more time to explain it clearly. And I hope I haven't made a mistake with the math here. But that's, uh, that's what it looks like. So let's see if it works. My band is going to be minus graph times square root of y0, which is u y minus target height divided by 0.5 times graph. Well, there is only one way to know if this was right or not. Looks like it worked. Great. There is something annoying here, and is that sometimes due to the speed of the ball, you don't see it on the bottom. So one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be um, when this happens, instead of um, bouncing off the ground, we're gonna put it on the ground. To graphically, uh, to more explicitly, so that it bounced off the ground. Okay. So, um, yeah. This is going to still work because our velocity is not dependent on, on the position where we are. But no. another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the, the, the gravity because it's um, because I want it to be, I want it to go a little bit slower. Otherwise, it's going to, it's going too fast. Yeah. It looks better, but now we should I should reduce the x speed because otherwise it's not it's going too fast. Okay, I'll have to stop. So, uh, as I was saying, the um, 
the, the, the ball is currently bouncing properly off the walls and off the ground. We can still... And it looks nice, it's got a nice movement to it. Yeah. We're gonna move it in the room so it's right here. And yeah. With this, at least it's not gonna bounce off the player in the first, so it's not gonna kill the player. But one of the things we could do is um, we could we could add collisions with the player. And we um, so that we can kill the player. So uh, p -p 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 collision with the ball. We can do something like that. so the game over. Um, message since we don't have a game over um, sprite I'm gonna simply so message game over and restart the room okay this is not a very I mean this is not the best way of doing this but uh, yeah Yeah, uh, it's game over. So uh, one of the things that is annoying is that you see it, but it's not hasn't moved yet. So um, so. Uh, it, I think that the problem is that we are triggering this message, the tick that this is going to be uh, that is hitting, but it hasn't rendered yet because this is happening before we do the rendering. So it would be better if we um, do something like uh, showing a message in the middle of the screen, stopping the time, something like that, like, like the game does. But I'm not going to be bothering to do that right now. I can't be bothered to do that right now. I may be doing it later, but not right now. Um, we should also add lives so that the player has three lives, and if he, if they lose all the lives, then they go back to the menu. We need the menu too. Yeah, we, we. I'm not gonna be doing all that. The purpose of this exercise is not to do all those things, but instead to learn about the movement, and well, we will do. We will do the we learn a little bit about the um, the movement and the collisions so when when colliding against bricks and uh, learn about rendering when rendering the hooks and splitting the ball etc. So anyway, I think um, that's enough for today. Uh, in summary, what we've done is we have implemented the movement of the ball. Um, We have a uh, constant speed movement in the x uh, axis. That means that we are always moving left and right. And when it bounces off something, it just changes the the direction, but same speed. With the y um, axis, we do something different. If we collide on the upper part, so we have a collision against the ceiling or against a brick, which we'll have later, then um, we want it to bounce back in the same with the same speed. But if we are um, riding against the ground, we want it to bounce only up, up to a certain height. We've done the calculations here, and this is what we get. And it's actually working. Um, so next, um, in our next uh, next day, we will do probably the 
colliding against bricks because it's got a lot to do with what we're doing now and later on we will do um, the rendering of the sorry the shooting of the hook and the rendering of it and the uh, reaction of the balls to the hook well see you guys in the next video bye